Hi, hello. So pipes, right? Very interesting topic. Mm, super interesting. Well, I guess we can make it interesting if we pair it with Grasshopper. And that's what we're going to do. So without any further ado, um, I have modeled out a few pieces here. And I, as per usual, I have already set the whole script. And I know that it works. So everything that I teach you, I know that it should work. And just to be really sneaky, and uh, this is what we're going to get. And that's it. <laughs> and that, that's what we're going to have. Just a little sneak peek. So if I turn to shaded view, this is what I have. Like these pieces right here, uh, doesn't matter. It can be something much more simpler. Um, I just modeled out a few, a few fancy spheres, right? And I have uh, created, well, that blue line doesn't, doesn't really matter. I have created some guidelines. Uh, these guidelines are basically where my pipes should start and what direction they should have. Right? Uh, these will not be referenced into Grasshopper, but they are here. What will be referenced into, in, into Grasshopper is going to be these curves right here. That, that I drew. So I guess what we can do is we can draw a few of them just so that you understand the principles. Um, I will grab a curve tool and let's create a new layer actually. Layer and tutorial. There we go. I'll grab a curve tool and let's say I want a pipe that starts from, from this and end somewhere, somewhere here, right? So I will start drawing the pipe from, uh, sorry, the line, the curve from this endpoint here. I'll anchor it to the midpoint here. And also, um, so that's the second point on the, of the curve. And I'll also grab the third point right here. This will make sure that the, um, the curve starts perfectly perpendicular to the surface or to this kind of plug, right? And I'll do the same thing for the, let's see here, right? But I'll go other way around. So from here to midpoint to here. But um, congratulations, we have made a curve. <laughs> Let's do one more. Let's do one more because we, we want to have at least two of them. Uh, create a curve tool and let's say from uh, from this one right here click 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 um to wherever we can go for this one for instance click click and click and that's that's about it right we have two of them now yay now I'm going in Grasshopper, I'm going to create the curve component like so. Oh, and let's do bifocals. You guys love bifocals. Okay, so I'll have a curve component, set multiple, and I'll just set, set both of them up, right? So what we want to happen now is we want these curves to be affected by gravity so that they fall down. Right, and they need to fall down um, until they kind of meet the ground, right? And then they should kind of collide with the ground so that they don't fall too far down. So there's going to be a few kangaroo goals that we'll need to do. So I am going to use kangaroo. So that's actually the first thing that I'm gonna add is a solver, solver. And as per usual uh, for the solver, you have, uh, let's expand this, uh, you have a toggle, boolean toggle, to be able to turn it on or off, a button to be able to reset it, so to reset the simulation, and for goal objects I really like using entwine with only two inputs, so I'll zoom in to the entwine, and I'll click on the minus sign right here to remove one of the inputs. By the way, this tutorial is for intermediate users, so I assume you kind of 
understand Grasshopper at least a little bit uh, to be able to follow this. I will not be explaining the simplest of things here. Um, so for Antwine, the first thing that I always like to, like there are two inputs, right? The first input that I always like to plug in is show. So what's the geometry that we're going to show? And then the second input is going to be all of the forces that affect that geometry. And once the simulation kind of runs, and it will spit out a data tree with two branches, right? Zero, zero, and zero, one. And I will know for sure that in the zero, zero branch, I will have my geometry, while zero, one branch will have all of the necessary bits and pieces that I don't really need for uh, further tasks, right? So I'll create explode tree node, plug that in. And right now it's it's empty because nothing comes in here, right? So, but once stuff will go out of here, uh, sorry, once I plug in stuff here, there is going to be data that's going to move out here. And I know that the first branch is going to be where my geometry is. And I believe we will have a curve as an output, or rather not one curve, but two curves, right? This one and this one. Both of them will be simulated and fallen on the ground. All right, so that's our kind of simulation setup. Let's start actually creating goals. First goal, show, my favorite. The show goal, once I connected, this is red because show doesn't actually show anything, so it's freaking out. Uh, the show goal uh, should give us, hmm, we could immediately connect curves to the show goal, but I don't think that's a good idea. I think it's a much better idea to rebuild the curves as polylines, right? So I will say, um, let's divide up, let's divide up the curve into some amount of points. And through those points, we create two polylines, right? Uh, like two sets of points equals two polylines. Polyline. There we go. Connect it. And then connect this to show. As you can see, like the 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 the, the line, the, the connection here is dashed. That means that we have two data branches going on. And I don't think we need that. Let me double check. Yes, we do not need that. So I will right click on the polyline output and choose flatten so that everything is in one list. Now you can see we just made it into a polyline. Question is, what's the resolution that we're going to be using, right? Because right now, um, doesn't matter what's the length of the curve, all of them will have the same amount of points, right? Which is 10 divisions equals 11 points. Um, no, I want to divide them according to length, but kind of approximately according to length. So what I'll do is I'll measure the length of the curves, right? So I have my length and I can then take the length and divide it by desired uh, segment, desired segment length, right? So we can do like two, for instance, here. And then I get some numbers. And these are not full numbers, we don't care. Uh, when we plug, plug them into the count, uh, they will become full numbers either way, right? So we get those. I'll just hit reset to, to clean it up a bit. And now in between my points here, my polyline segments, I have two millimeters of, of a gap around two millimeters of a gap. We can do even even more, like one millimeter of a gap. There we go, right? Okay, so we have that. Uh, let's disable this. That's our polyline. And actually let's move everything to the, to the right a little bit. That's our polyline. Right now our simulation is not doing much. It's just showing the polyline to us, which is, fine, but we kind of wanted to do a little bit more. Um, actually, let's not hide that. So I want to add, for instance, 
gravity to the whole calculation, right? So, or a gravity goal. So I will use a goal called load, which asks me to give it a bunch of points uh, that will be affected by certain uh, force, force vector. Let me double check. Yes, that is correct. Uh, so all of the points that we will be affecting is are located right here, right? In our divide point. So they connect like that. So every single point will receive some sort of a force that's pulling it, a gravity force. Uh, the, the direction of the force is going to be Z, right? Upwards, but actually downwards. So it's going to be negative, negative Z. And the strength of it, I will use something pretty low, like 0 0.11, uh, probably even less. 0 0.01? No, let's try. Let's try 0 0.11. If it's too much, then we will we will calibrate. So a pretty low force for gravity. We take the loads, we connect them to the entwine. Uh, you can see that again, this is dashed. I don't like it when it's dashed. So I'm going to right click on the P input of the load and choose to flatten it so that all of the points arrive as a single list and then um, get parsed to entwine also as a single goal list. So that is our second goal. I'm just kind of grouping the goal so that I, at least visually you can see. Okay, now if I run this simulation, you can see that it's running and it's actually falling down. Um, right now it's fallen way, way, way far, far, far away. Um, but it is kind of working. It's just that the curves are affected by gravity and just, they just keep falling, right? And re they do that really, really fast. So we can't really even see them falling. We need to fix that. So to fix it, uh, we will use anchor. an anchor node and the anchor node will lock in certain points of the curves so that they don't those points don't fall if that makes sense they, they kind of lock the curves in place so which points well actually actually for uh, every curve i want let's say one two three first three points to be locked Right? And also, I want last, where are they? Last three points to be locked. How do we do that? Well, we do that with indices, right? We know that um, here we have two lists of, cur of points, right? So I can say list item, list item, connect it like that. And if I say, let's just create a panel and let's just write them in the panel. If I want my first point, it's going to be index 0. If I want my second point, it's going to be index 1. If I want my third point, it's going to be index oops, index 2. Right? That's easy. How do I get points at the end of the list? So if I want to have the last point, it's going to be index minus 1. Because it goes back, backwards, right? So if, if you pass 0 and you move backwards even more, you end up at the end of the list. Right, so minus one, then minus two, and minus three. That that is us working backwards. How do we automate this? Well, we can do that with series, right? With series of numbers, and we can start. See that we start counting from zero. That's fine. We and we count like every one number: zero, one, two, three, and so on. And how many times do we count? Uh, we count three times, right? Like that. So if I check what, what's the output here, 0, 1, 2. Perfect, we have half of it. Now I will create another series node. And I will say that we start counting from dash dash minus 1. Um, dash dash minus 1 just creates a panel that's minus 1. Um, so we start counting from minus 1. And with every step, we remove one, right? So we count backwards. So actually the step size or step is also minus one. And the 
count number or how many times we count is also three, like that. Bam, check it out, minus one, two, three. Okay, we have these two. Then I can merge, merge them together into one big happy family, right? And connect that to our list item index. Now, if I check, I can see that I have three points here, three points here and so on, right? In the, in the, in the back as well. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Great. Now with this, I can control. I can see that actually I want to have like six, right? I don't want three or I want to have five or four, right? So I can control um, how many points are being completely anchored to, um, completely anchored from any kind of influence from uh, external uh, loads or, or like gravity and so on. Okay, we have that. Uh, I will right click on the output of list item and I'll flatten it because now all of the points can come out as one single list and I'll plug that into the, into the anchor node right here and holding down the shift key, plug in the anchor to the antwine. Yay, that's our eh, third goal, right? locking th things in place. If now I reset and run the simulation, you can see that, well, let's stop it. <laughs> you can see that they are indeed doing the thing. It's just like they are locking the curves in place. It's just that the curves are infinitely stretchy. So they just stretch out like crazy. So we need to somehow fix that, right? To fix it, we need one more goal that is called rod, bending rod, which will ask us for a polyline. We do have uh, two polylines here, right? So I'll connect the polyline tool to the rod polyline input like that. And then we just holding down the shift key, connect it to the zero one. And you can see that it becomes uh, grafted. No, 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 no. We don't want it grafted, so we'll flatten it, just like that. Reset, run. Wablamo. <laughs> there it is, right? Works. How can we control the stiffness of this? Well, that's the actual strength, uh, axial strength and bending strength, right? I can do like 50 for the strength so that you can see how they work, right? That's a hundred and that's pretty droopy with two, right? So let's, let's actually keep it at a hundred. I, I like the, the, the bendiness of it, right? So we have that behavior. Okay, cool, cool. But there are a few, a few issues still to be to be solved. Let's actually select everything here and hide, disable preview of everything and just leave the um, leave this output like the solver, the explode tree and the curve uh, being previewed because we don't want to kind of see too many things. Um, now we need to deal with collisions, right? The curves as they are relaxing, as they are kind of going down, they need to col uh, collide with the forms and also with the ground, right? We don't want them to clip. Um, we don't want them to clip this, right? We want them to lay on it. How do we do that? Well, you could use floor for it, floor, but floor kind of, I don't like floor because it... Um, it's always an XY plane, right? I want to be able to move the plane uh, up or down. So instead we will do solid, um, how is it called? Point solid. Uh, let's just go here, kangaroo, and let's, let's just find it. Goals mesh, no, it's not that. Goals collide, solid point collide. There we go, that's the one, 
right? Because with this, we can say points, okay? We have the points here as per usual. Bam, divide curve goes into points input of solid point collide. I will flatten it as per usual because I want all of the points to be in one place. Um, then we do, oh, also this needs to be grouped. Uh, then we do, what kind of solid do we collide it with? Well, in this case, I want to collide it with the ground, uh, with, with some sort of a ground plane, right? So I'll just make a rectangle real quick. Rectangle, and I'll say the rectangle, I want, to, I want it to be centered and I want to be able to control it. So I'll say um, 100 negative. So it, it should go from minus 100 to 100. And I'll just construct domain from minus 100 to 100, just like that. And we connect the constructed domain to x and y. This little tool just helps us, you know, create a plane in, in which we will work. So it doesn't need to be 100, it's enough if it's like 42, in, in my case. Right, now let's create um, a surface from it. Boundary surface. Like that. And let's just extrude. Let's just extrude the surface along the z-direction, negative, so it's basically downwards by, I don't know, like 10. And just any kind of thickness that you want to give it. 10 is fine. So we have a box, basically. Yay, this thing makes a box. <laughs> uh, with this surface, or with this extrusion, um, I can I can use it as my solid collide, and you can see if I connect it to the zero one input, then and and run it again, reset. Then my curves collide with the box. There is a problem, and the problem is that if I look at the curves as if they were pipes, right? pipes or rather let's let's not do this because this is very like you, you usually don't want to deal with polylines uh, and piping so let's do this continuity first on the curves get all of the points basically out of them and then create a nerves curve create a nerves curve through through the points like that and then we run up pipe command through this. Now it's much faster and also uh, much cleaner looking. Now we can see a problem that we have. And the problem is that um, if I do custom, custom preview for this, this bad boy is intersecting with the box. And that makes sense because we are intersecting it with the center area, right? With the spine of the pipe, not with the volume of the pipe. So we need to fix that. How do we do that? Well, first coffee. And then we think, well, actually, if we say that, you know, this is my floor, but what if I collide with something that is higher than the floor, right? Or something that is one millimeter because this is literally the radius right of our um, of our pipes right what if we collide it with something that is higher so i can just say move the collider along the z axis up by this number and this number is basically the radius of our pipes that we will be using all right, so I could immediately create a line here, like connect this to the pipe radius, radius here, and also connect it to the, uh, let's try, uh, 
connected to the unit Z right here. Long wires, I know, sucks, but it is what it is. Once this is done, you know, this is the moved one, I can connect it to as my solid, hide it, and now we can see that, you know, to a certain extent, actually, let's, let's run this again. Eh, it's good enough, <laughs> right? You could even say that uh, for this, um, for the movement, I want to add a little bit to the radius, but uh, we're, we're, we're not going to go there just, just yet. Small adjustments will be done at the end of the tutorial. Either way, we move the collider a little bit up. <clears throat> okay, good. This is our floor, basically. Right? Our floor goal. There we go. Then, there is a problem. And the problem is here. And actually, let's make the problem more apparent by doing this. The curves are intersecting each other. Right? We don't want that. We want the curves to fall on each other really nicely in a pretty way. Uh, so we need uh, one more goal. Yep. It's going to be two more goals and we're done. I promise. Um, the goal that we're going to be using is called Sphere Collide. Um, no, it's not. It's under Goals Collision. Yeah, it is Sphere Collide. I don't know why it didn't show me. Sphere Collide asks us for points and asks us for radius. And I can visually show you that by using mesh uh, sphere tool. You don't need to follow this, but if I use mesh sphere tool and I apply it as a radius, you can see that we along the curve, uh, apply one as a radius. You can see that along the curve, we are creating a bunch of spheres that will be colliding each other. And yes, uh, when we run the simulation, the curves will expand, right? Because the spheres are colliding heavily here, but that's fine. That is absolutely fine. What we care about is the that these spheres collide with these spheres, right? So with that said, I will go for sphere collide tool. Uh, I will connect my divide curve point output. Oh, you can't see it. There we go. I'll connect my divide point, uh, divide curve point output to the sphere collide input, input, point input. Right click on it. Choose to flatten. There we go. Actually, maybe this would make sense to... Let's make me smaller. Just to make sure that you see everything. <laughs> Um, so now I have a bunch of points and we will be creating these spheres around them with a certain radius. What's the radius? You guessed it. It's the same slider. That's the radius. Holding down the shift key, I'll connect it to the zero one input of the entwine. Let's give it a little bit more breathing room, getting a little bit clustered here. Um, right. So. I'll group this, disable preview of this, run the simulation again. And now the curves bounce off from each other. Yay. Um, can I force it to, to collide even more? Let's try this. Um, I will just take this bottom curve here. Let's stop the simulation for a bit. I'll take the bottom curve and I will rebuild it like that. 12, I uh, don't need 12. Let's do eight. Eight points like that. F10. Just grab a few control points. Uh, grab them and move them like that just to force a uh, a collision to happen like that and that kinda and maybe this can move out here you don't really want the collision to happen at the start because it's going to freak out but if you do it like this it should work okay 
Uh, then I need to reset and run this again. And now you can see that these guys are indeed kind of colliding. Not very nicely though. Wouldn't call this a nice collide. So I think the strength should be bigger. So I'm just giving it 66 strength. And now we can see that the collision is very, very much working. So I'm, I'm, I like to reuse the sliders wherever I can, just not to have too many things to change. Yay, we have ourselves a few, a few working pipes. One problem is that we, they still need to collide with these bad boys right here, right? So I am going to do uh, a few things here like last goal and it's not going to be too big it's going to be like this right so it's it's not trust me it's not going to be that bad so just bear with me i have created um wherever it is sub d high res curves guide oh my god hide that enable this is it here Yes, it is. I have made a simpler version of my forms just for the for this purpose, for collision purpose, right? So I'm going to select both of them. This is like the low resolution version, let's say like that. And I'll reference them in as a as two B reps. Set multiple. There we go. I will give them um I will convert them into a mesh by using quad remesh because that's the cleanest way to do it also takes the longest <laughs> quad remesh and actually for the settings i will go for mesh triangulation quad remesh settings there we go i'll and i will use um even lower polygon count desired uh, polygon count 500 because I don't need it to have a lot of polygons at this stage once this is done and actually let's um, let's hide them this is the mesh that we get right nothing too fancy uh, I will give it a thickness right I will offset it it's the same problem that we had with the floor right where we need the mesh to push away the curves from farther out because we are only dealing with the center line of the pipes, not with the edges of the pipes, right? So I will say offset mesh. Offset mesh, like that. What's the distance? You guessed it. It's the same slider, like that. One more thing is uh, we want to we don't want to create a solid because it's going to try and create a shell. So I will just toggle this to false like that. And that's it. We have ourselves a thick boy, a thickened up boy, right? Then I can oh uh, if I remember correctly, sorry about this. Yes. Then I can uh, use Catmull Clark. A subdivision on it to just uh, round off um, round off the, the, the problematic areas right so to, to have it a little bit smoother and then we will do um, what do we do we do combine and clean a very neat tool by uh, Daniel Piker that uh, cleans up the mesh uh, and also merges all of the meshes into one. But to do that, we need this to be in one list. As you can see, they're not. So I'll right click on it and choose to flatten it like that. And then we run it through combine and clean. Okay, we have ourselves a mesh that is going to be a collider, right? So what do we do? Well, we use the same technique that we used here, solid point collide. I will even copy and paste this solid point collide to here and I'll just use this as my solid. Technically, I could just attach it like that, 
right? Like this. But uh, whatever. I'll, I'll just use a separate goal just so that it's uh, visually um, easier to understand what's going on. And this is our last goal that, of course, we need to connect like that. Holding down the shift key again. Reset the simulation, run the simulation. And you can see that, um, well, that happened very quickly. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, that happened very quickly, but you could see it um, sliding like that. Right? That That's what we were after, this behavior. Okay. So we have that going on. Uh, this is intersecting, by the way. Sure. Uh, I guess we can just use a higher strength here to, to make it not intersect. So it's being pushed away a bit, uh, even higher strength. Not sure if I want to use anything that's even higher than that. Let's see. Does it bounce? It yeah, kind of bounces, but not really. Uh, we will we will be fixing that later, if I remember to. But all in all, it does it does work, kind of. Okay, so this is our um, kangaroo setup. Now I do have. Let me delete these. I do have the curves already. Oops already set up here like that so I could just kind of select them well, not you select them and just run them through here set multiple reset run and you can see that the, the squiggly bits are going to fall fall in place just nicely Just nicely, come on. So we could say that the tutorial here is finished, but there's kind of a few things that I want to, um, that I want to talk about, right? First thing is variation in, in the width of the curves. And second one is how do we make them nicer? <laughs> So making them nicer is going to be like the last part of the tutorial, but variation. Well, <coughs> God damn it, the, the coffee is just, just too good, <clears throat> just too good. So unfortunately with this particular definition, you can't have variable widths uh, to the curves, but what you can do is you can, for instance, say, oops, let's stop that, stop that, stop that, cancel that, stop that, there we go. Uh, you could say that, well, this boy, this curve right here, needs to be thicker, right? So I can say that, okay, I will get only this curve, set one curve, only this one, no other, right? And I, for this one, I will say the thickness of it should be three, right? So a pretty damn thick boy, like that. And then I can say reset, run this, flip, just plops itself on the on the ground, right? Cool. Uh, with this, I can also control the gravity. So make it plop a bit more. Then it starts intersecting here a little bit. That's fine. Um, we can do like, I wonder if, Whatever this is, a hundred thousand will will help it. A hundred thousand starts freak making this these areas freak out because it starts fighting the anchor points. So I'm not actually going to do that. I will keep it as it is. We will not show that area and that that weird area there. Or even better, I could say the bending strength is lower. Oh, that that's that's even worse. So the bending strength does need to be higher, and we just have it like that actually said that it does need to intersect doesn't it it should intersect because we're oh my god i'm i'm stupid we are dealing with just the points running through the middle right so of course the pipe will intersect what am i saying okay 
So we do this. So it's a little bit more of a floppy boy, right? Uh, we have ourselves a little bit stronger gravity, maybe not that strong. And what we need to do is we need to check the collisions with the originals, right? With these. And when we do, we see that it's actually not even touching it, right? Because we have offset it. So it's actually fine. <laughs> Oops, that, that was my bad. Whoopsie. Anyway, uh, by the end of it, we will have a curve here that we will be able to work with, right? A simulated curve. So I'm going to take this curve, um, I'm sorry, a, a curve that we get here, NURBS curve, and I will bake it out. Bake. And I'll bake it out to baked curves layer, like that. There we go. And then I will clear values. So if I check my baked curves layer, you can see that I have actually two of them, right? Uh, this is from the example and this one is from the tutorial. So in this case, I will be using the one from the tutorial just to keep things in place, right? Um, so here we want all of the curves, all of the pipes, future pipes that will fall to also react and fall onto the baked one, right? Onto the thick boy. So what, what do I do? Well, here I can just say, do we even need to quad remesh it? I don't think we do, do we? Oh no, I, I do need to quad remesh it because we are going to offset it, right? So I will take this curve, reference it in, set one curve. That's, that's the simulated one, right? The one that fell down. I will create a pipe around it. And the pipe radius will have the radius of the curve that we used for simulation. That is going to be three. Okay. Three. Connected like that. So we have our thick boy again. And I do want it to be closed. So the end caps, I'll right click on that and choose flat. Like that. So it's a closed pipe. Then what I can do is just simply holding down the shift key, connect it to the quad remesh input, M input of quad remesh. It's going to freak out for a little bit because it needs to recalculate the quad remesh. Still calculating, there we go, it's done. And now if I check with Catmull Clark subdivision, I can see my collision geometry now incorporates the curve, right? The, the, the thick boy. So now for all of the other pipes, um, how do we do that quickly? The answer is we don't. We just select all of them and then we will unselect the central one. Like that. And we unselect the the one which we used to simulate the thick boy. Right? So we have our five pipes. Right click. Set multiple curves. And then they, they do this. We don't want them to be that thick though. Uh, so I will reset them to one. Thickness of one. And just, we need to reset the simulation as well, like that. And now they just kind of vomit themselves onto the, um, onto the geometry. If I stop the simulation now, you can see that the pipes, they sink into the geometry. And that is because we have uh, a pretty a high gravity. Uh, and also everything else has a pretty low um, low strength, right? So we need to calibrate this. And I don't really remember, so what kind of, mm, what values I used, so I'll, I'll double check. 100 for those, 0.1 for that, uh, one for that, yeah, okay. So we use, 100 for bending strength and we use 0 0.1 for the gravity. I 
assume I should use even lower, but sure, whatever. We'll we'll use that. And here uh, we all are already using a thousand, so that's fine. Reset, run the simulation. Should kind of work. Yeah, now you can see it's it's kind of behaving a little bit more politely with the geometry, right? So once this is finished, I'll stop it here. Once this is finished, this is what we have, curves that are kind of colliding. Keep in mind that we're looking at the offsetted version. Um, this is the original pipe, right? So they're barely touching each other. I think this is kind of acceptable. Right, the level of how much they are touching. It's acceptable. So we can move on. Whew. Okay, this part of the script is finished, has been done, right? So if, if you followed along, you have the simulation part, everything else is going to be how I make it nicer. Um, the definition is available for Patreon supporters. Uh, so if you um, check out the link in the video description, you can get the definition and the file just by supporting the channel, for supporting the channel. It would be very much appreciated. But if you just followed along, then you already have the definition, don't you? Don't you? Anyway, um, now to make it nicer, we can... First of all, delete these pipes. We don't need these pipes anymore, right? What we care about is the curves. So let me hide everything here. And also this is a mess. So I'll just select everything and type in hide. I only care about this, oh, only about the curves, right? I will say curve goes out like that. There is a kind of a Walk, 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 a break and curve will continue so that I can I, I have like a little bit of modularity in my in my definition right so for the curves I can say for every curve uh, let's create uh, perpendicular frames on each curve right and the perpendicular frames works in a very similar way as the divide curve component, right? So I'm going to have a very similar approach. Uh, I will measure the line length, no, uh, length, just length of the curve, right? I will divide it by my desired uh, length of the segment, <coughs> apologies, um, I don't remember what I used. Double checking two. I used two. Okay. By two. Great. And then I will use that as my division counter for perpendicular frames on the curve. So I know that between these planes, I have two. By the way, if the planes are way too big for you, display, preview, plane size, and change this here to, in my case, it's three. All right, so we have a bunch of planes. What now? <laughs> well, now on them, I can say um, polygon. I can create a polygon on them, right? And I can say that the radius of the polygon should be um, the same radius as what we used for the curves here, right? One. So I don't want the, the wire to be that long, so I'll just make it like so. Just create another slider, you know, saying one. So I, we have a bunch of polygons. Then I can just loft them, for instance, just to show you, right? So we get ourselves a little bit of lofting, but that's boring, so let's not do that. Instead, let's do some divisions, right? Okay, so... These polygons that we currently have, let's hide a bunch of stuff. Actually, this is fine. These polygons that we currently have go like 
first or index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, blah, blah. And then here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, blah, blah. And 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So, so they are being counted uh, in separate lists. So first thing that I want is I want the, <clears throat> the polygons in pairs, right? So I can say this list of polygons that we have, let's shift it. Shift the list by one. So now, if this was zero, then this becomes zero. If this was one, then this becomes one. So everything gets kind of shifted, right? Okay, so now we have this zero here, uh, this polygon being zero in this node. And in this node, actually this polygon is zero, right? So what I can do is I can merge these two together like that. Not really. Delete. <laughs> not really. Forgot one thing. We need to first graft it. And I will not be explaining the the reason why we or what graft actually does, because again, I assume you are intermediate level learners. Um, we do need to graph them though. We need to separate them into separate lists so that later or now we can merge them. Um, this makes it so, or rather doesn't make it so, because we need to right click, simplify, just to make sure that the, the data trees match. So we simplify both outputs of the graph tree. And this makes it so then that we have pairs of curves. The only problematic pair that we will have is the one that's um, that's here, right at the start, right? Because if this gets shifted to here, so zero gets shifted to here, this becomes minus one. Meaning that a pair of this polygon is actually the polygon at the end of this curve, right? So it kind of cr creates an infinite loop that way. We don't want that. So for shift list, for the wrap, I will say toggle false. So it doesn't wrap it. So then what happens is one element in each or one data branch is always going to, for each curve is always going to have only one polygon left because we're shifting the other one out of existence, right? So we need to clean, clean up the tree. And I can do that in multiple ways, but the, the, the fastest one, or probably not, probably not the fastest one, I'm lying to you. The one that I know, the one that I know is if you take three statistics like that, right? Here under length, it's going to say how many elements each data branch has. And you can ask, okay, is it larger uh, or rather, is it smaller um, than two? Right? And if it's smaller than two, then uh, use the answer to cull the paths. Right? And what we get from it is we get the, the branches, the paths that have a, only one element in them or any amount of elements that's less than two. Okay, good. Not really, because we need to um, have it opposite, right? We don't care about the ones that have one element in them. We care about every other one, right? So I'm going to right click on the P input and choose to invert. So now we remove all of the branches that have one. Well, we remove all the paths. Then with the new paths, I can say tree branch and I can extract from this data tree only the branches that have um, two elements in them, like so. Yay. Um, if I were to check it out now, Thanks, so brother. Um, I could just loft, and I can see that now pairs are being loft. So all of these are separate um, poly surfaces now, right? Rings of poly surfaces. Great, this works. A little bit of a problem though. 
And that little problem is called 285 milliseconds <laughs> for lofting. That is um, uh, not not so uh, not so fast type of a problem, right? Uh, it's I, I don't like it. I want it faster. Uh, and if we want it faster, we need to build our own little approach, and we will build our own little approach using meshes and using meshing. So let's not do loft, <clears throat> but instead let's uh, we will create like a cluster that we will use, which is going to be basically mesh loft. Before that, before that, I kind of want to figure out um, a, a concept, an idea of what am I doing within these um, partitions, right? So my idea is um, if we have one polygon here, let's see this polygon, and one polygon here, then what I want to happen, and let's see, third polygon here, just to make it nicer. What I want to happen is I want um, a larger polygon here, larger polygon here, here, and here, and these get lofted this way, lofted this way, and then we have a loft here, a loft here and so on, right? So in between these, I, I want to have two larger polygons. And let's just find, let's say this is going to be our test area, these two, right? So this and this. So what I want to create are these two larger ones, larger boys. Okay, how do we do that? We do that with tween curve, which asks us for two inputs and a factor. Okay, here we have two elements in each branch, so I can easily do list length or list item. Right, that's uh, the first element in the list. That's the second element in the list. You know, first, second, connect, connect. And since the factor is 0 0.5, it gives me a polygon right in the middle. I don't want that. I want the polygons to be pretty close to the ends, right? So I will create a panel which says 0 0.1, enter 0 0.9. So one that is 10% of the way from here to here, so somewhere here and the other one that is 90%, so somewhere here. Connect that, it's gonna freak out. And it's freaking out because it says data conversion field from text to number. That's because here we're using two numbers in two separate lines, and it doesn't understand that these are two separate lines. So what I need to do is right click and choose multi-line data to turn it off, right? Then it's going to place them into separate lines and voila. Now we have successfully created this polygon here and this polygon here. We're getting there. We're getting there. Now between these polygons, between these two, I will create a loft, right? And again, if I just do loft, 289 milliseconds, very slow. Very, very not good. Very bad. Very, very bad. So we're not doing that. Instead, we're, we're going to be creating our own little script. I need to remember. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so our script is going to explode. Or rather, let's just do curve. Curve input like that. It's going to explode these polygons and let's hide actually everything else from here. We're just looking at these two, right? It's going to explode them so that we have segments and then we will do some uh, data tree shenanigans. So I guess I need to say trust me bro on this. Mm. How do I teach you this? 
Okay, if I take a param viewer and I look at it, <clears throat> I can see that I have six elements in each branch. Fair enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Six, <clears throat> six separate lines in each branch, right? And the way the data tree is structured, if I even simplify it, that's a bit, no, that doesn't matter. The way the data tree is structured is the first line or column is which curve do the polygons belong to, right? So it, since we have five of them, the last number is going to be four, right? Because we start counting from zero. Okay, that's easy. The second one, the second number is which um, segment, which segment does the did mm, these polygons belong to, right? So each curve has like, this is, let's say, segment number 10, segment number 11, segment number 12, and so on, right? So each curve has a varying number of segments, okay? And third one is which polygon within that segment does the line belong to, right? So polygon 1, polygon 2. So it's always 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, because we, we're dealing with pairs. What I want to do <clears throat> is I want to take this line and this line and put them in the same branch. Then this line and this line and put them in the same branch. How do I do that? Well, well, we do that with a path mapper where I'm just going to say, let's connect it, and I'm going to say reverse mapping. That doesn't really matter. Right-click, reverse mapping, um, expand it. You can see that it has a bunch of stuff written there, doesn't matter. And I will just say source and target are the same right now. So it's not doing anything, right? And this is basically a um, number corresponding to the curves, right? The first one, the second one, and the third one, and the indices. So what do we do? We shift them around A, B, Y, and then instead of Y, we use C. So it's like flip, flipped, right? Once this is done, <clears throat> and I check it out, um, path, ma no, not, not path mapper, mapper um, param viewer. If I check them out now, I have pairs. And these pairs are literally <clears throat> this line and this line, then this line and this line, right? We have successfully reshuffled the data tree for our needs. Yeah, trust me, bro. <laughs> so now, <clears throat> since we have them, I can say list item, give me the first and the second item of, of each kind of pair. Then for each of them, give me the endpoints like that. And like that, so we have, um, let's say this line and this line, right? We have start end and then start end here. So what I can do is I can merge the points as start end and, oops, and start. Keep in mind, these need to be reversed because it needs to go clockwise or else you're going to create a bunch of ribbons like that, and we do construct mesh from them, bam, six milliseconds instead of beautiful, beautiful 289. And six milliseconds here, I guess, so it's 12. Much, much faster. We have ourselves a bunch of meshes. Uh, did I do anything with them? Not really, not really, right? So by the end of it, we have mesh output like that. And that is basically it, right? So this is our little neat little tool. And with it, I'm just going to, since we are not going to change anything about it, I'm just going to click the scroll wheel, select like all of these 
items here, click the scroll wheel and choose cluster. Just to make it a little bit more convenient, right? Don't need those, connect that. And this cluster will be called right click and call it const uh, or mesh loft. Why don't you just, hello, change this. <laughs> anyway, we know that this is mesh loft. Okay. So this little tool will, will help us quite a bit. So now we have these segments here, but I still need to have the segments in between and also to have like um, segments filling in the gaps here and here. How do we do that? Well, I need to scale these twinned curves down, right? So I'm going to say scale polygon center like that and scale them towards the center of themselves uh, by a factor of 0 0.9, let's say. Bam. Just ever so slightly. We can do even less, like 0 0.8. Let's, let's go drastic with this. Right? 0 0.8. Okay, so we have our scaled uh, scaled curves now. And I will list item. I will extract, not extract them, but separate them out. Right? So that we have one and a second one and the second. And for this one, I'll do exact same thing, separate them out. First, second also. So these should match perfectly, right? So I can just say merge, bam, bam, like that. So now we have this pair, right? And then I can merge the ends as well. So we have this pair. Okay, we have done that. And now how do we love them? Well, glad you asked. Cluster, copy it in. And just creates a loft just like that. Cluster, copy it in. Come on, come on, you can do it. Just creates a cluster. Yay. We have ourselves a little bit of a loft here. Now, last thing to do is we need to, um, either we loft between these, which could be a way to go, but uh, I, I think it's better if we have more resolution. So I'll bring back this, you know, this list item here. I'll bring back this and I will scale it just the same way or not even this, sorry, 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 this. And I will scale them just the same way as, as how I scaled the these curves here, right? With this. I'll just copy paste. Actually, we will use the same factor. So I'll reuse the same slider. And then from tree branch, I will just connect it to the G input, uh, G input to, of the scale and tree branch goes into polygon center. So we're initially just scaling this bad boy down to 0 0.8 of its size, right? List item again, bam, both of them, you know, both ends, good. Let's start hiding things because it's getting a little bit too convoluted like that. So we have um, we have the middle and then here, probably here. Yes, we have the way the curves that need to loft with the middle. Right. So now we just need to figure out which pair is which uh, let's do. Let's do merge. Um, I believe I needs to merge with I, right? And plus one will merge with plus one. That makes sense. Yes. So these merge together and let's do one more merge. 
plus one with plus one. Perfect. Now we do the lofty lofty like that. And we do another lofty lofty like that. Success. Okay. We have ourselves a mesh. Well, we have a lot of meshes. We need to clean them up. Merge. Let's just get them all into one big happy family. Uh, let's just make sure that... Yeah, it seems like it, uh, it's, it's pretty clean. So they all exist in one, one list. Now we can see that that list uh, needs to be trimmed down a little bit. Because right now it's all... Um, it's still, we're still working within each segment. We don't want that. We want to work within each curve, right? So I'm going to use trim free. And just to make sure, I'll right click and choose simplify here, just to make sure that, you know, it's always clean. Trim tree. And my, how many times do I go back the data tree to clean it up um, is Basically two, right? Because I want to go back to the starting row and we have three of them or starting column. We have three of them, right? So if we trim by two, we will be back at the start. Dash dash two, connected. Yay, we have all of them now in five different branches, which means I can um, loft or mesh join i can mesh join them just like that so now we have um, five separate meshes i can use um, mesh to sub d or sub d from mesh just like that we have ourselves a sub d surface and we can do custom preview just like that and we, we get, you know, something here. I wonder why this is messing up. Mm, let, let's, let's try fixing this. Because you can see that there is a seam that's messing up. I think just simple weld will do the trick. So after we use mesh join, we do welding. No, it doesn't help. Uh, we can do align align vertices yep align vertices cleans it up so there were like duplicate vertices in those places that that's fine uh, we just clean it up with this uh, so we created something a little bit too blobby for my taste. So I want to somehow make it a little bit less blobby. How do we do that? Well, I can easily run a Catmull Clark subdivision. So basically the more resolution uh, each polygon has, the better it's going to hold its shape uh, during the subdivision, subdivisioning. So after trim tree, I can apply a Catmull Clark on this, but I need to make sure that smooth naked edges here, I have it as fixed so that it's not moving the edges away. Connect that. Hmm. Oh, for some reason it wants to, that's interesting. For some reason, Catmull Clark really wants to add everything into a separate data tree or data branch. So we don't do that. We do Catmull Clark before we do trim tree. Which is going to force it into... Uh, it's, it's also going to be a little bit messy. That's fine. So Catmull Clark really wants to add everything into a separate branch. I don't know why, but with the trim tree, we can fix it by just changing this number to three. And now everything is kind of connected properly. We have our sub D and we have a bunch of, let's go for Arctic, 
a bunch of wires here, right? Coming back here, where was it? That's the radius, the radius, we can't touch the radius, but we can change the segment size. For instance, I can say four, so much longer segments, or I can say one, much smaller segments, right? I'll, I'll keep it as two though. And one more thing that we can change is the proportion, right? So right now we're offsetting it by 10%. Uh, from both sides and thus we're creating these gaps. So what happens if it's 0 0.01 and 0 0.99? So only 1%. Then the gaps, of course, are very, very small, right? So I'll use something like 0 0.05, uh, 0 0.03 and 97. There we go. Something like that. It's always going to freak out a little bit on these areas right here. Um, if you give it more resolution, uh, where is it? Let's go somewhere in between 1.5. The more resolution you give it, the better it's going to deal with the corners like those. But it's always going to have a, like a, a problem because we're dealing with segments here. <clears throat> but all in all, this works, right? So we know that this works. Then what I do is I disconnect it and I will find the curve that we uh, show selected. The curve that we used, I believe it's this one, right? The simulated curve, the thick boy. Remember it? Set one curve. Should still kind of work on it, shouldn't it? Or maybe it's not gonna work on it. Why is this freaking out? Because segments here are... We have six segments here. So it uh, we need a different path mapper for this to work. That's fine. Uh, we just do a b a b y and a i b like that save it so that works then this one we need to fix or not no, uh, we don't. We just need to r reduce this to two. So I'll just create a new um, panel saying two. And that's it. By, by the end of it, we have the final output. Uh, we just need to now change the radius to three. Because that's, you know, how thick of a boy we had. And this probably needs to change to also something like three or even more four you know, pretty thick. Once that is done, I just <clears throat> bake it out. Insert key, by the way. I reconnect my curves again. Now it's not going to work again, but that's fine. We already know what needs to be changed. These two are changed. So we have two versions. One version works on single curve and the other one works on large curves. Um, and then, this needs to be three. Hide that. <clears throat> oh yeah, and of, of course the, the, the radius, the radius needs to be one. Those guys were very, very thick. Okay, once that is done, we just hit insert. Hide everything here. Nice. We look at the show selected. <clears throat> we look at the elements. That's how they look like. That's how they intersect. One of them is kind of sinking into the ground. I will need to check out what's up with that. But 
apologies. But other than that, seems to be working quite well. Wires are there. So now you will be able to do pretty complex uh, wiring, right? And add a little bit more uh, visual interest to your scenes. Again, the whole script is going to be available for Patreon supporters, right? So, so consider doing that or just follow along and, you know, get frustrated with me blabbing for one and a half hours. <laughs> Said that, hope you enjoyed this and I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Later. <laughs>